my uh, blame my you know the parking pass people. I I'm sorry. And welcome to everybody who has decided to grace themselves into our presence for a aftermath discussion for the Crafting Gamers. The Crafting Gamer hosted a three-part series where he ran a Palladium-esque system to one of the most fondly remembered RPGs for video game consoles in the early 2000s. And... Tonight's entire episode, we're going to talk about the last three sessions we've done with our friend, the Crafting Gamer. I'd like to welcome, before we start, I, I do want to welcome two new members on uh, on our roles here, the Crafting Gamer, and our friend, Mike Dimart. Appreciate the two of you being involved with us. We did not have to do that, but we, we truly appreciate this. And look forward to I actually got the me. opportunity to meet Mike in person last month. Really? Uh, he and his wife, they, they, they absolutely need to make a channel as soon as freaking possible. They're a, a, an absolute treasure in the community. See, I don't I don't right, know I'm, them as much. Camera right. flashing, so I got to turn off my camera. Oh. I, I'm, I can still hear you guys, but I've learned that uh, for some weird reason, it doesn't happen every time, but my camera, if my camera's on, the audio gets choppy. I turn my camera off. Poof. Audio is perfectly fine. It's really weird. Fantastic. Um, that just makes me irritated because I, I have an i5 right next to me from 2013. And it hasn't it hasn't completely crapped out on us yet. But it is it is getting to that point where we know, you know, one of these days it's going to be asked to turn on and it refuses to turn on. I can't stand it whenever we have issues like that. Garrett, don't you have a friend that uh, one of your one of your links is to a man that does custom build PCs? No, one of my friends that I have over in the UK is uh, uh, IT guy for Snap On Tools over there. I know Snap On Tools, and that British show know. IT was amazing. <laughs> anyway, after we celebrated the Crafting Gamer and Mike Dimart, and appreciate the two of you being there involved with us. So much better. <laughs> <laughs> that that is that is Baron's shtick. So please, audience, don't don't abandon us. Um, that's what he likes to do. <laughs> so would like to say thank you for being here in the chat. We have our friend Flady One, Soybase Jeremy, our other friend, insert name here, and Soybase Jeremy once again. And Flady's like, I learned machines fail to obey, to obey my commands, and Hammer helps out the most. Yeah, yeah. Hammer and duct tape. <laughs> you okay. See my PC. So. I just I want to ask before we get into this, we got Kai, Cracking Gamer, and myself on top row, Baron, Connell, and Shadow on the bottom. Uh, before we before I turn this over for the mass panel, I have to ask Cracking Gamer, how likely are you to want to develop what you ran into some sort of world book? You mean the story or just or the entire thing i assume there's more oh okay yeah sorry, sorry, sorry. uh oh yeah uh, it's i don't know about an entire book devoted to this one story but definitely a sizable chunk of the current book will be devoted to stories and then includes this one though i've noticed very quickly i have a theme with my stories beware greed okay. Almost every single like little interesting story I've thought of recently always seems to involve you getting your ass bitten for being too greedy. 
the last that one, was no one exception. Of my parts. That was one of my favorite parts of your game. It really was. I, I know that sounds lame, but I really enjoyed what you did there. I also really Thank enjoyed you. that you allowed us to it, but to siphon it off slowly. Mm hmm. It worked out really good, and, and I just want to say congratulations. You you endured six hours with us, and you still have your, your sanity intact. And then I really appreciated what you did. Well, I owe okay, Shadow kind of um, an apology because I, I sort of left his character in the dust compared to everybody else. Sorry about that, Shadow. Hey, don't worry about it. Hey, I, I got a question for you. Um, yeah. If, if you if you uh, ever bring this to print, um, what are you gonna do about art? Uh, that's what I'm trying to work on now. That's why, in your case, Shadow, I've asked uh, Jackie for uh, picture uh, uh, examples of some of his art. See if he's got art I want to see in the book. Okay. And I'm going to have to start seeing, really start looking for other artists to potentially get get at least one or two more artists that I can use for art. Yeah, I've got some some secret tri uh, tips I can give you that I don't want to put on the air when it comes yeah. to getting some art done that uh, I watched a couple of companies uh, save a phenomenal amount of money by just using a couple of these little tricks um, that could, they could possibly cut down the number of artists you need as well as uh how much art you need so uh get with me on right. discord afterwards what's up nerds nerd welcome to the show but you absolutely have to have art if you're going to go further uh you know mainstream this this game agreed so as powerful like that, you, you... yeah agreed as powerful as words can be there's nothing quite like a picture, like the a picture behind Baron, for example, showing all those different flying ships. There's nothing quite like that to make you feel and realize that you're not in a human or Earth world, I should say. This is a human world, but it's not an Earth world. My smart ass is find an AI you like and run with it, but that's not a great answer. Oh, I tried AI. I literally got flying submarines. Victorian ships surrounded by clouds and then some something that I can't tell if it's supposed to be ships on the sky and then on the sea at the same time. And it's that, that one's just like, OK, we're going to go as abstractly, weirdly artable as an AI can. It's like. Do I need to be on acid to understand this picture? Yeah, pretty much. By the way, don't do acid. Acid is bad. Drugs are bad. I, I really, it depends on if they're prescribed really or not. This was a much better game experience than what I was anticipating. For for the mo majority of the, 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 the session, I was just entertained by hearing everybody else interact with the world you gave them. I I was enjoying my own self there, but I was having a blast and he, I, the only th time I kind of was like, was when shadow was like off camera and other things are going on. I'm like, I wonder if the DM can rope in his player to be part of this, but I figured you had a story set up idea. So I, I, I was shut my mouth about it. I, uh, I don't remember why it was off camera. Kitchen. Sorry, um, no, no, I was actually having fun telling stories about this. I uh, was hanging out with a couple, uh, a couple I know, and they have a couple of uh, kids, and I guess you turned into an octopus, and uh, you know, just kind of kidified it for them. I didn't tell them I did an eight side grundle punch because <laughs> the mom would have looked at me disapproving, as the father would give me a high five. Um, so no, it's it's a fun game. It really is. I mean. And to quote one, um, I can't think of his first name, one gecko from uh, Wall Street, uh, greed is good. And especially when it comes to like a pirate-ish field kind of game, uh, greed can run, the, uh, the greed can 
run the story for a while. Okay, now yeah. you guys got the treasure. Now what? Uh huh. See, I, when when you originally put out that you were you were you know we were kind of pirates, I was fully expecting us to go full on Muppets Treasure Island. But we actually we no no seriously because I I know I know the rest of the panel <laughs> I know what we do <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're we're going to go we I thought we were uh oh we're going to go sailing on the big blue wet thing no <laughs> no it was it was truly truly I think that it was actually very easy to see our characters. You know, it, it was kind of anime-ish, but it was also, you know, we were able to, with the way that you describe things and with the, the, the book and stuff that we got a little bit, you know, got beforehand, able to actually take ourselves and put ourselves into the character. And especially to be able to do that with a bare bone system that that you've got right now because i mean granted this is the al this was the alpha test you know we, we talked about it you know on the on the precursor and you know and to be able to have something so developed even with a bare bone system like that it, i mean you already have the world pretty much there and it's kind of like oh, what do you want to do and it's kind of up to us, you know, yeah, we, there are things that we can go out and do, you know, yes, we are on a ship, we have some things that we have to take care of, but there's always that little extra of, you know, if there's stuff you want to do, you know, you've got time for that, which in a lot of games that I've played, not a lot of DMs actually give you that freedom of, hey, you've got a week in port or a week, you know, of downtime, what are you guys doing? You know, tell me what you want to do. You know, what what do you what what does your character want to see themselves doing in town? What it what what you know? It, it gave so many openings to help give another aspect to the game that I think actually helped along the way, giving that freedom. Yes. Yeah, whenever you, somebody says, you have a week, what do you want to do? Like, I want to ask the DM, can this be its own special three sessions? No. <laughs> and that's can usually write, my answer. Can I write you a small, um, a small, you know, plan of action? And it will be large. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> it's not small. It's a possibility lady it's a very big possibility uh talk to bruce and we can see what we can get set up i mean the only downside to that is he will have to deal with us yeah yeah well and the and truthfully i think what actually helped too was between uh jade and kai you know once you put that first that first draft out, I think them looking at it and picking it apart actually, I think, helped with the characters themselves of getting everything kind of smoothed out and stuff like that. Before, you know, especially beforehand. So, yeah, you know, I want to thank, I want to recognize, you know, both Jade and Kai for kind of looking at it pulling some things apart, making some suggestions, or just asking questions for clarifications yes. that, that didn't really, that you didn't really realize that needed to be made. So I think, yeah. you know, it's a win-win there. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about the Skyships of Arania uh, game series. I have no idea about it. But if you wanted to run it, sure, I was, I was pretty much open to it once everybody else was like, oh my god, yes. I thought this was based on uh, Skies of Arcadia. It is. Nope. In ways. Oh, uh, in ways, yeah. The the floating islands and the different colored suns in, in the video game, it's the moons. 
and that's about it because even the cultures within under the moons are different there's only one unified like dangerous to the world in the video game culture the other one that would have existed above them destroyed themselves millennia ago that the silver culture being that culture is still alive and well in my book they're just very isolationist Well, remind me not to put my character's name as Rockefeller and go to that island, because that <laughs> doesn't seem to work out well historically. No, no, no. Vanderbilt. Was it? I'll get back to you on that one. I, I'm Rockefeller's not... still, the Rockefellers still have money. The Vanderbilts do not. No, no. One of the uh, male children disappeared on an island. It doesn't wow. matter. It, it doesn't you matter. You need Tom Hanks. No. No, no, that was his acting. Wilson! Epstein? <laughs> no, I mean, there's actually a rumor going around that, that he's related to them. Not everybody's related to somebody down the road. But anyways, back to the topic at hand. How well did we, in your opinion, because this is your game. We got to sit down at the table, verbal table, uh, rock out some characters, do some fun stuff. Some dumb stuff, and there was whatever Sh uh, Shadow was doing. Um, I was here ninety percent of the time. What are you I about? being playful. Don't get, don't, don't break out the sunscreen quite yet. Um, as a player, as the DM to the player, what did you think of the characters? How we interact with the characters? How we made our characters for your world? Was it something? that you thought might happen? Were you expecting, like Baron said, you know, puppets and the great big wet stuff? What were you thinking with my Muppets. Happen? Muppets. Oh, Muppets, right. No P, no P, just an M. Sorry. Jesus. Uh, well, what I was expecting, yes. I didn't exactly get, but with that said, I am a very, very sandboxy GM, so... Basically, what I knew was you guys were going to start at the dock. You guys were going to, I knew you guys were going to meet the octopus. And I knew you're going to find that island. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. And I knew you guys were going to fight those ships at the end. That's about all I knew. So, and as for you guys, the way you acted, I'll have to admit to, um, I'll have to admit to, like, to someone I uh, kind of quote unquote complained to about, they, didn't do anything outside of what my system is supposed to be capable of doing. So I think you all uh, have the greatest players. Sounds like we failed. We <laughs> false, false security. Oh, that was all right. Who's blowing up my discord? Is it you? Not me. Sorry. What do you want done, Connell? Uh, in his campaign, I want to play it more. I, I want to come back to this world a year from now uh, and see what he has uh, proved, what he has taken away, how more anime-ish has become. It has it done more of a, you know, a false uh, golden age pirate type feel to it from uh, real history. I, I'm kind of curious what this bloody hell. What this uh, game will turn it uh, turn out to be, or this this yeah this game will turn out to be. Um, I hope you find some other people that are willing to play, and I want to hear those stories because I want to hear about somebody else turning into an octopus that you know Rondo punches nine uh, eight yeah eight other people in the nards. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me because Flady agreed to to help me test my game at some point. The uh, there was one thing one move I was expecting that I heard out of Flady that none of you even suggested, which was harpoon one of the ships and then ram it into a uh, mountainside. You guys were like, no, screw that. We're going to capture that ship. Yeah. Well, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. We're pirates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah we're, <laughs> we're, true. we're pirates and uh, we, we take stuff. Often. You're waiting. It's kind of like the Viking trading agreement. What's yours is mine. What's mine is mine. If it's burnt, it's yours. <laughs> if you I can't that hold it, marriage. it's not yours. That, that's also marriage. <laughs> that can't, yeah. <laughs> Sad panda. 
Um, <laughs> so there was a lot of one piece overlaps. Was that intentional oh, yeah. or, or so it was intentional? Oh yeah, it was. Like for example, uh, I gave Kai try uh, the tri swords ability or weapon proficiency. I didn't use it. Uh huh. Because I figured he'd be like, "Oh, I can go full Zoro with this." No. Uh, like I said, if I had known Kai was not going to play that, I would have given him something else because that would have left him a little more open in what kind of weapons he had used. And then come to find out, no, Katana's good enough. I don't need to use any other weapon. I wanted him to use a tri ability, but one of the swords goes inserts itself into a cod piece. Nope. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> uh, no. Um, I'm sorry you didn't get to have that. I think it'd be amazing, you know. Be a great, <laughs> I think you're be, wrong. It would be a great nod to uh, dust, uh, dust to dawn. Um, yeah, it would be. <laughs> so, how are you? Did, did anybody actually have gun guns like muskets? I know there was. Yeah, it was a sniper. Shadow, Shadow yeah. had a sniper. Yeah, I which I quickly learned. Which I quickly learned Shadow was way underpowered for anything at uh, this would be technically mid level. Yeah, yeah. The guns uh, just don't 2D4, do enough damage. 2d4, 2d6 is not even close. Uh, as a general rule no, of thumb, uh, a, a firearm should be able to kill somebody with one bullet. If there's no chance, then you're firing what? You know, BBs? Rubber rounds. Yeah. Um, hey, those hurt. Yeah. Yeah, I've got one in my arm. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the... Where, oh, I feel like I'm asking all the questions here. Um, I No, well, somebody else can cut me off. I, I no, know. You're doing I asked a question. Hi. Uh, uh, what questions no. do you have? I don't have questions. I liked what I saw. <laughs> I <laughs> What am I going to okay. say? Oh, man, I was having fun. Wow. You know? Yeah, having fun. Remember, remember when you would go to games and you would actually have fun? And, like, you, you played and events would happen and you'd either fail them and get in a worse situation or you'd succeed and you'd progress through the story either way no matter what? Remember yeah. that? Or maybe yeah. you died. Maybe your failure meant you died. But yeah, if I don't have fun, I don't come back a second night. Um, and even though you know we're doing, you know, uh, kind of a public service helping you out, crafty. Um, if I didn't like it, I would have just. I would have just. You know. I don't think. I think he did a public service and helped us out. Well, you you're ty you're entitled to your opinion. <laughs> Yes, I know you're 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 wrong. I'm right. He's right. It's okay. You can say it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I worked with you a little bit when it came to the cooking aspect of, for your uh, for that character. Yeah. What kind of? I mean, so that, that will be uh, moving on a playable character, uh, playable not character, a playable class. Yes. Um, what are you thinking for the levels of it? How are you thinking about leveling it? I mean, for like, is it going to be a class skill level? You learn how to uh, trying to think. Is it going to be actual levels or are you going to be able to like up skills as, well, as you're leveling? Well, that's what he's trying I, to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the way I set it up is um, a little bit of a hybrid of leveling up slash uh, point buy. Like Palladium you get actually points is every... correct? Uh, Palladium doesn't have point buy. Oh, I didn't hear you say point buy. Uh, where um, you will get points every single, t uh, every single um, level. Those are primarily meant for you to spend on your special abilities. Where uh, you're up to level 15 anyway. 
your uh, uh, your health and your NDE or natural damage endurance will automatically go up by a D4 and a D6. And your skills up to they reach their maximum will get a 5% uh, increase every level. But you can in get an if you want to spend your points, you can get extra dice for your health and NDE and increase your um, the percentage you get for a skill if you want. Okay. So, so with, with this, now that we've done the, uh, the the play test, is there anything that you feel that needs to be fleshed out more, or additional what? things that that need to be added, or additional things that you know need to be removed? Well, I definitely have to, like I said before, alter guns. They need to be stronger. Otherwise, like, they're not really useful at certain levels and after a certain level. And then you're just like, yeah, what am I using this for? Because you like uh, it. It's an animal. It's a friend. Yeah. <laughs> this is my rifle. This is my gun. I, as much as I would love to be the acquisition king, like, aha, my plus three sword is obsolete ballast. I found a plus five holy avenger. Deeper in the dungeon to slay Diablo, I go. But instead, the DM I would have that would let me play Diablo would give a personality to each and every one of those fucking magic weapons, of which there's a million point chart to give you various weapons from the pit of Diablo. And he would be a dick, and he'd be like giving me the lower enchanted ones would be like super cool, like they got a charisma of like 17 or 20. They're awesome. The more majorly enchanted ones would act like that O5 that just demands you kiss his ass before he acknowledges your presence. No, no. The gun the gun with the intelligent modifier oh, with intelligence on it would be Betty White. And like Placid. I will be kill that cocksucker. It'd be amazing. What is your obsession with Betty White these days? What's, why don't you have oh, an her? Why don't you have an obsession with Betty White? Because I'm not a granny chaser. I used to I'll fap to young Betty White, I'll have you know. <laughs> and I am a man of culture. <laughs> All I have to say is about, it's about Betty White is uh, God bless the American queen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone likes making jokes that Betty White lived almost as long as the queen of England. So she's like our queen of England, our queen, the queen of America. I really liked what she made. I really liked what she did. I I think she's still. Oh yeah, she. I, I I I miss her being Betty White. That was there were reasons why I hold her in such high regard. And it sucks that people get old and they just their their body gives out. But as you yourself get older, you'll be doing idle tasks and you'll remember something because you literally miss somebody who used to be part of your life, one of the pillars of your upbringing, and you'll be wondering what they would be doing today in 2023 or whatever. Whatever you, the viewer, are watching this, if your deceased grandfather or great uncle were there with you watching all the shit unfold around you, how would they react? How would they react to how you have to react to all the crap going on around you? And uh, I... I ride around all day. I'm a DM. I have an imagination. Betty White's been my co-pilot in my job for about maybe 12 or 15 hours, and she never likes the smell. I can never imagine her liking the smell of what I do. It does not work. And if Let so, I'll get a plus. <laughs> Didn't mean to derail the conversation there. Sorry. No, 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 that's right. I'm trying to. So in the game, in the world that you're building, are we are quite literally we're not stuck to one planet. We're we are we are are we stuck to one planet? You are stuck to one planet f for the moment. I actually intend to write, like Palladium has the different uh, supplement, not supplements, um, world books. I intend to do world books for this, and then there's going to be basically sun books because the suns in my game are actually giant moons, just different colors. And at some point, you're going to have the technology to fly to one of those moons, and there will be a book for each of them. 
I can just see like since this is taking a lot of cues from not a lot of cues, but some cues from One Piece. I can just see the One Piece being on one of the moons as an adventure. <laughs> you never know. You never know. So the with with, with the with the system. Uh, so we're we're going to kind of move into. I think we've all pretty much give our uh, opinion on you know the the kind of the good. Uh, we're going to actually start with Kai. What what was some of the bad? Because we always do the good, the bad, and the ugly with this. So, what what was some of the bad, Kai? Character sheet. I'll be honest, yeah, I'm not the most sheet. imaginative. Well, the uh, thing not... here is, I I guess I'm so used to handwriting my character sheets because I don't trust any corporation to give me a character sheet that, that, that was written by anybody. But I was having a lot of problems with the simple fact that one, so stats, bonuses, what I think you would need to do is is that that a lot of the bonuses are written as though they're I don't like pluses to hit, pluses to this thing in a game where we want to roll low. And so a lot of the time I was having to mentally inverse all of your bonuses so that way because it doesn't make sense that in a game where you want to roll low that you want to add a plus three to a modifier to hit at that point i'm wondering well no low good why high so if you're going to try to like refine the engine to be a bit better i would suggest just eliminating permanently any idea that oh i can just simply you know like solidify your not like solidify the numbers of the game engine down so that way there's consistency if it's roll low positives should be negatives negatives should be positives and so that way we're not confused all the like we're not having to play Thacko's retarded cousin um, games games here. I don't mean to be insulting, but Th Thacko's retarded cousin. Well, my and, mic didn't pick it up, but I just giggled. So, yeah, I I, I heard that, but I'm just but the, the the truth of it really is simply. So my pluses are really negative. My negative reaction positives, and so I rolled a hit. So do I include weapon? Okay, weapon quality, skill, and then stat, add them together, roll my die, then subtract the positive from the negative, I, from my roll. It's like, it shouldn't be a math equation to figure out how to hit somebody. And that's, that's one thing I would have is, I guess because I focus on... And, so it seems most combat is all based around this. So I know I was looking at it from I want to stab a bitch repeatedly until they're no longer I functional creatures, but that's not for everybody. But I understand that that's just probably how all combat works. So making it all work, especially since I was the I was supposed to be the class that has the most attacks and the most parries, and then trying to figure out okay, so when I parry slash dodge slash protect somebody. I roll looking for their target number or what a, it's try to make that a bit clearer. So that way it's easier to understand how I'm supposed to do my job. Okay. I'm not meant to be insulting, but that's my one thing I've, I had. So basic. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So go ahead, uh, basically, the uh, the well, technically, the two things you had a problem with is pluses should be minuses and minuses should be pluses, so that it just sinks. I did the the I did it. The pluses meant bonuses, and minuses meant negatives, because that's what everyone was built in used to. Like that's what you I see know. In all the thing other is, books. is that, but the thing is, is that the moment that the moment you're looking at a game where you have roll low, positives are bad negatives are good so if it's roll low 
So if it was roll high, I'm totally okay with this, but you went with roll low. And then on top of that, you had active defense, which is roll low, match, match surpass their uh, their to hit number. Again, if I went with positive positives, I would never hit a single thing. I would never hurt anything. Because so they rolled a four. I rolled a five. But with my modifiers, I I either rolled a nine or I rolled a one. And since it was rolled low, I assumed that, okay, modify pluses equals negatives, negatives equals positives. Got it. We're good. And yeah, you're all right. Battle text target computers give you a minus one to hit, I uh, minus one to hit bonus. And, but yeah, it's a fantastic player. So pulse lasers, right. target computers make a lot of sense. What one thing I could possibly suggest with that is something that uh, Warhammer Fantasy and also 40k have when you're actually putting the numbers together, you just add what pluses are in there as you're to hit, just give it a base number instead of saying this is your number and then trying to figure out a plus or minus. This yeah. is your target number, just, just I, I'm yeah. You know, Give us a target number. I, I'm going to just say something real quick. Uh, he ran this a lot like Palladium, and I don't mind the Palladium lore. I don't mind the Palladium lore for Rifts or for Fantasy. I think both of those universes are, are fine for what they do. I'm never a fan of the Palladium skill system. and I know that there's a lot of people out there that they disagree with me to the cows come home. That's great. I just, I, I prefer stick with either percentiles or go with a D fucking 20. But going through there and trying to have like him haul bounce between the two, oh, it's combat, so now we're on D20s. Well, now it's skills, we're in percentiles. Really, dude. Yeah. And that's nothing against what he ran. What he did, perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable, game good, did good. We stayed on target, can't complain. But I just, that's my group, that's my beef with Palladium system. And he basically ran a Palladium style system, which is great. I just hate the alternating between the two D100. Now it's time for D20 rolls. I just don't like it. Standardize. Standardize. Yes. Yes. You've got a big book. It's the ultimate risk book now. And now you're making another hardcover for Palladium Fantasy, or supposedly you're doing that. And instead of them making it standardized for their system, they're going to Savage Worlds, the most bland system out there. Really? Look, not everyone can enjoy, you know, GURPS. So we need to have discount GURPS. GURPS, but I ordered it off Wish. Yeah. Hmm. And I mean, and I love Deadlands, but I don't want to ever play Deadlands or anything but Deadlands RP system. That's it. Amen. The, the cards, the chips, dice. Well, I can already tell that's one thing uh, Bruce and I will always disagree on because I have a collection of clickety clackety max rocks. I want to use them all. You can, but with Deadlands, you're supposed to deal cards. You're supposed to have poker chips to help you or to fuck the party over. And then you have dice, all the dice. Dice collections. That a barbarian would be happy setting this on the table. Happy beating somebody to death with it. Now, now I have a lot of math rocks too, but ultimately when it comes down to it, I only want to use D10s. D10s make me happy. All the D10s make me happy. <laughs> I, I, I'm a this big is... fan of the percentile system. And as you guys know, I have like, 20 dice in my collection that I use for gaming. Everything else is in the game it came with. Um, I, I really don't have any issue with them. I, I, I As long as I get to roll something, I'm happy. Hmm. I, I can adapt. See, 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 Kai is happy when you say things like World of Darkness. Well, exalted. Okay. Exalted. It's up to me. It'd be a werewolf. percentile system. Exalted. Percentiles well, all the D10s. I don't have enough D10s. I need buckets more. I'm playing a solar. I need three more buckets, please. 
cement mixer full of deep in. <laughs> we installed a candid camera at Chimerian's gaming nook. <laughs> And replaced all of his D10s with manly D12s. Let's go to the angry footage now. <laughs> Don't let him lie. He puts all of the D10s on the floor and does D10 angels out of them. I <laughs> was. This is what he does. He does I have was. a great one hit too. <laughs> that, because I... It's not, it's not my fault. I play high level. Uh, I exalted high level uh, Mage the Ascension and high level uh, L5R. I need more D10s. You don't have enough. I don't have enough. I need at least 20. Uh, Bare someone, minimum. Someone traded out those D10s for a D4. Just no one told him. I would tell. Mm. I would know. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, but he lays down to do the angel. He gets stuck too much. He That's knows. acupuncture. That's acupuncture. That's <laughs> I, that's ancient Chinese dice tech, uh, a technique on how to cure back injury. <laughs> Deep <laughs> right, Bruce. Okay, so uh, Bruce, what about you? Sure. What was the, the 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 bad? The bad was the system. It's nothing really against him. His story was fine. I'm just not a guy that likes the the, the mixing of D20 and D, D percentile. I like D percentile better. You get better granularity in it. Uh, the D20 could work too, I guess. I mean, I played Pathfinder for uh, third edition Pathfinder for almost 20 fucking years. And, you know, before that, I played TSR, D&D, Basic, Rule, Cyclopedia. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to talk about the seven years, you know, that I, five years I've played religiously Star Wars D6, which is a better system. But I, I would I, I would say that I've I've played a lot of, D20 based games and now that I'm getting into uh, percentile games because I'm writing one the D20 has failed me um, I, I think I really do like what I see better on the D percentile with all the variances in the roles I, I think it works out a lot better as a DM and you know I mean it's also you know it, it'd be easy can, to convert the D20 mathematics into D100 for this game, Palladium, or whatever, it, it, it wouldn't matter. It'd be hard, it'd be easy to do it. A lot of DMs don't want to do that. They, oh, the operator's manual says use a D20 or use a dice pool, D6s. I'll use that. And they don't want to stretch or whatever. And that's fine. But for this campaign, for what he read, read, ran off for us for six hours, <laughs> I was happy. I was, ex I was ecstatic that we got a chance to play. And we got to play something different. I love playing Sheffield. I thought Sheffield was a bad motherfucker. He was based on a bad motherfucker. So I was just happy. Do you want a do you want a percentile score there? Baron? Sure. Sure. I would I would give the the campaign or the gameplay that he did. Not not relying on rules. I would say the smoothness of gameplay, the way he transitioned from player to player to situation to situation, I would say as a GM, he probably rolled a solid 84, 83, 84, around there. Uh, his system is, he was hesitant the first couple sessions. He was he was very tepid uh, using that, but he was better in his interactions using just like questioning, which a lot of DMs get away from uh, when they first start. They... They think they want to roll on the dice on everything. They want to rely on that. He didn't do that so much. He did, like, what are you going to do? And we'd say that, and he'd be like, well, you don't got to roll for it. You can you can just do that. We're not under any crunch. Cool. I wish more DMs understood that, you know. If you've got a week to make potions, or you got a week to make beneficial foods, or you've got a week to make laxatives because your navigator is stopped up, eventually you're going to make laxatives he'll get back to you on what day you've done your crafting and you want to do anything else this week or are you just going to lay in your bunk and look at pictures of jewel state wait that's an option too i'll be in my bunk <laughs> see ya. you 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 and justin with the jewel state everybody knows morena bakara 
you know, the only reason why I don't talk about her so much is because she got her hair chopped. Now, you're talking about Marina Buckerin off of the Deadpool movies. Absolutely 10 out of Firefly. 10. Firefly? Firefly, she was a, a, a 10 out of 10. But I would say that when I saw her in the V series, when she got everything chopped and looked like some sort of like lesbian out of the UK, should have been a cop. Um, I'm going to say she's probably about a four. A, a solid low mid. I'm very harsh. I don't know. I, 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 I know what you're talking about. Um, but, I, you know, hair can grow back. The face is always key. The face generally stays the same. Yeah, I get it. But, I mean, I just, I'm not a guy for, like, short-haired women. And I don't know how she is in reality. I don't know who she is. Hey, Aaron Caster. But she's I, I married think married with a couple of kids. I, I think she's, like, a really talented actress. And I wish she would just keep her hair long. Because the paparazzi's out there. And they love grabbing 40-year-olds that still look like they're 22 or 24. And she qualifies for that. Yeah, she got married to her co-star on Gotham. I didn't even realize Gotham was a TV show. It, you didn't miss much. Actually, I, I, I stay away from that crap. It wasn't that bad. It, it, to give it a fair shake, it was still better than Adam West. <laughs> My problem with Gotham is some of the some of the way they portrayed certain characters, like the Penguin. Excuse me. The penguin was not a skinny little wimp. He was a badass, fat ass who could break anybody's figures and didn't give a shit. Well, Dan DeVito likes to play it, so you know there's that. But he was just yeah. starting out. He didn't know what he was doing. I think Dan DeVito sang very well as a penguin, one of his best roles. Yep. I like Jeremy on Gotham. If we're gonna talk about that for a hot second, Jeremy was. <laughs> Jeremy was fun. I hope that's not true, lady. <laughs> All I was right, hoping... moving on. Okay. And Bo, welcome also. Uh, oh, hey, Bo, didn't see you there, buddy. Is it uh, Friday yet? Shadow, Shadow, what's what 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 do you got for the bad? Are you just gonna skip Connell? Okay. Well, okay, I'm yep. going in. Uh, I'm going okay, in. going that order. I got you. I got you. Uh, well, to be honest, guys, um, I I didn't actually read the book. Um, I had to wing it and. It, it it had its moments. Um, I, I, I could give him some uh, some game mastering critiques, but this isn't the place for that. Uh, if he's interested, we can talk in Discord. Uh, you know, when I when I play a sniper, because Bo, Bo will tell you I'm playing a sniper in his game. I, I like playing snipers. I, I like shooting things far away in in real life. So it, it you know it's easy. Um, but you know, getting only to shoot once. That's not fun. Yeah. Um, and and then, you know, we already went over it. The, the damage, uh, had I not shot him in the face, um, you know, he wouldn't have died, I, I imagine. Uh, probably because, from what no. I recall, everybody had quite a bit of hit points. And, uh, you know, if, if you're going to start out with, you know, 40, 50 some odd hit points, there, there's, you know, there really should be a chance that you – take something out when you shoot uh otherwise people would not use guns you know uh yeah exactly i, I realize that if, we, if you can take out a deer with one shot now deer definitely has more hit points than the average human but you can take a deer out with one shot so i would either recommend either upping the damage or having uh gun combat a little differently than uh melee combat to some extent where you know, you, you either have a hit location thing or a crit thing or, or something. Otherwise, uh, other players will just not want to run a sniper or a gunslinger or something like that. And uh, I, I don't know what other uh, characters you might have or, or if it's a proficiency system with weapons and someone may decide to use a firearm. But there, there needs to be a, a reason for it. We, we call them the, the great equalizer for a reason because, you know, they're they're really powerful, really dangerous, and almost always uh, fatal in the hands of an expert. Agreed. But other than that, you know, a uh, uh, great group of guys. So right off the bat, we could be playing Monopoly. It's going to be fun. Right, guys? No. So, no. No. It's Monopoly. 
It's never. Very affordable. No, no, there no, no. no. In, in Monopoly. Okay, now, you're if telling playing me. Di- if we're playing diplomacy, now that. That's a great way to never see any of you guys again. I've always wanted to play the Dune <laughs> game. Going. Look, there's only one thing Monopoly is good for, is flipping it onto the floor. That's where it belongs. Well, okay, He's, okay. Well, you, pick another, you pick another crappy game, and we're all in the same building. You know, uh, I guarantee we're yes. going to have a good time. Okay? That's yes. Connect four. Connect four. <laughs> what you we need, like, we need three of them, right? Then we have a Connect four, like, like a, a tournament, um, <laughs> I'm gonna pass on that too. But wait, you, you wait, get wait. my point, guys. Uh, well, so I, I don't know, think I'll, Connell I'll be around can, for the next one. Con, Connell, uh, Connell can't play that though. Connect four because he can't count that high. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say he couldn't reach the table. <laughs> oh yeah, when yeah uh, you know when he's only like you know. I was expecting a colorblind three. joke. Ooh, that would have been better. Ow. You put that low. Connell, what was the bad for you? <laughs> this conversation. <laughs> Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, as much fun as I had with the combat at the end, I, I thought it was kind of one-sided. Uh, yeah. Not the challenge rating or anything like that, because those guys could have been a pain in the ass, and that's just that's just minor stuff. The adjustment on what, how much HP or how much damage I do—that's not what I'm talking about. You, me, and Kai basically ran the show as soon as it happened. It's no one's fault. I'm not blaming Kai. Not blaming myself. It just is what it is. Well, there's other systems where uh, Pathfinder Starfinder had a really cool concept to it. Is when combat happens, especially when you're on a ship, as we were, everybody had a job. Everybody had the chance to roll the dice, it being D20, D10s, D6, D12s, D fuck if I care. But everybody had a chance to have a turn. So it didn't become just the Kai and Connell show. It could have been chef is okay. The chef is, you know, the captain's doing with something. So the chef takes the helm. Uh, Baron's character takes one side, one half of the cannons or whatever. Uh, Shadow takes the other half. Then I, I you know. What are you talking about? But I'm, what I'm saying is there could have been, and in my opinion, there should be, mechanics in the game that keeps all players active in the situation so you don't have a person two people and the rest of the people at your table sitting on their thumb was wearing why the fuck am i here um and this is not a jab at you this is just my this is me playing 3.5 pathfinder and all you know when this stuff happens it gets kind of gets boring for everybody else and if you could put in a mechanic where it keeps everybody interested, not interested, everybody still doing something that involves the ship, because this will, you know, ship on ship battle or ship on sea monster or whatever style combat, unless we're on land, then I, I think it would move. I, me personally, I think it would move better. Um, uh, then when you're doing the boarding party, then well, you just go – you know, everybody still gets a turn. So, so what you're talking yeah, about is it, kind it of is kind of traveler esque. Was to be that? I, I guess traveler s. Uh, I get uh, except for um, this guy running traveler ish for us. I've never played traveler. Granted, I saw it in the used books over at Just for Fun. I might pick up a copy. Um. But I, it's I know Path uh, Starfinder has a mechanic. I know I played at least one other. Uh, I think um, was it Serenity, the Firefly, uh, Firefly RPG has that mechanic in it. Uh, I don't remember if Dark Heresy did. I think it does. But there's a mechanic in the game when it comes to ship to ship battle that keeps everybody at the table doing something other than one person, two people, or whatever. 
running the rest of the evening. Yeah, it it was supposed to be a longer term battle than that. And listen, what you ran for us was fine. I'm I'm not going to say it was bad or it was good or it was like you know oh the best ever. Like I wasn't expecting the quality of game you gave us. No, and it was the quality of game was that. great. I yeah, I will not say it was a bad game. I think it was, I had a lot of fun in it, but. I get to grunt upon eight people with a firing octopus. What did, you know, and that was just me telling a story. During that time, what was the chef doing? What was the artificer doing? One counter for that one, Connell. And I I know that we didn't have to, to have to deal with you literally. You based... Sorry. I was going to say we ran out of time. True. In this, had we been able to go on an extra he hour? Turns at the same time. How many what he's doing isn't outside the realm of possibility, even within my game, not following reality. But he, I see the thing was was uh, we, uh, due to the time and the setup necessary to get to the actual battle, we only so, had about so, enough time to get through a half of a turn. Yeah, and so we got. We didn't have a chance for because I got I got an action or two. You got an action or two. Baron got an action or two. The sniper got a ch and Shadow got a, I got a turn, but we didn't have a chance to finish out things properly. We didn't have a chance to pull it close up to allow our chef to get into it. Had we had an extra hour, we probably could have. But time is time. That's fair. I mean, like I said, it was just my thoughts on this. Is the bad part of it. This was my minor hiccup with the game. Other than that, I think it was a great. And I wish we had, you know, six more hours. Right. So I feel like a dick. <laughs> no, don't be. We we address it. Yeah. I really must have set off soy based Jeremy with the whole AI thing. You're pointing out something that's learned. Yeah. But the turn length also had the problem of we didn't, we were asking a lot of questions on how to make combat work to properly understand, uh, understand it, which meant we were trying to do high level stuff without the fundamentals. So it slowed down what should have been a lot faster. Had once we, had, once we, if we had more time I could to play. See. Yeah, sorry. I'm reading through the chat right now. What were you That's saying, okay. Uh, TCG. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm used to games being a little more balanced than I based my game off as as it actually meant to be. So I might have to see about running in a mechanic that ever. Everybody does get a turn because, well, like, like, because it's a combination of what Kai and um, that is the because I everybody got a turn, but only a Kai and Kai, uh, Kai and Kai, Kai and Connell got meaningful turns. Everyone else just second most meaningful was uh, as a Baron when he shot off some missiles. Of course, yes. Shadow managed to snipe somebody and actually kill the captain, but that's all he did, and that wasn't much compared to Kai and Connell. So, uh, uh, everybody get a full turn plans. That's what I'm there for one shot, one kill. You know, I, I don't really have a problem with it being deadly. I think the firearms should be excessively deadly. But sniper rifles rifles are rarely done right in RPs. Go ahead. 
Well, he doesn't actually have a sniper rifle. It's just a regular rifle. The way it's set up is that the marksman gets at 100 feet uh, plus one at 200 feet plus two and at 300 feet plus three. But once he hits 100 feet, he receives no minuses of any kind to his rifle. Extra bonuses beyond those base three to get as this marksman can be affected by minuses. Or in this case, pluses, as Kai wants to put. Uh, I guess I could say as I blame him. It's okay. But um, but yeah, the marksman's big thing is he's not supposed to be getting to the point that his entire rifle is jamming up and down. He's still ain't going to receive any minuses because that's part of what the marksman's supposed to be. But that that is all that's great up to the point that you find out the marksman can't actually kill anybody or even be that useful at the 15th level with the Mac where you get cut off from all your hit gaining hit points automatically. Once you reach that, that level, the marksman pretty much becomes useless because he's not doing enough damage. Yeah, that that that, that you know. Most players. I think can, I'm repeating myself now. It, most players can extrapolate ahead when they see a brand new character. They're going to look at it, and, you know, especially if they've read a bunch of other characters. They're going to, you know, judge it and weigh it. You know, fun versus you know usefulness, and, and, and there's got to be a happy medium. Uh, otherwise, you know, you will find nobody runs whatever character you're talking about. Are you meaning for this game to be for first-time yeah. players or for players that have been around the block a few times? Why not both? Uh, I would suspect around the block a few times because, I mean, yeah, plenty, plenty of new new players come up with ideas, but expecting the whole basis of your character is you come up with all your own abilities. I don't expect too many players are going to be too happy with that, especially if they are uh hear a lot of stuff about D D and how they're set up. Uh Gwen's gonna go like, oh well I have to think of my own shit. Fuck that. I I could So this is this would definitely be something I would say for the more advanced. There's a part of me that is like going back to when I was a kid or watching my own kids grow up where they wanted to be superheroes, but each one of them wanted different powers and they're making up the powers that they have, you know, I, I have Superman's eye beams, but instead of being heat, they're, I don't know, ice or whatever, you know, and I feel like if you can get somebody who can reconnect with that part of their imagination, because God, life will beat it out of you if you give it a chance to, I think that person is going to be a rock star in this game. I think that person is going to absolutely love and run with this game until the cows come home. And for a pe- person to be able to say, well, my abilities are, what was that uh, thing you did, uh, Kai, the uh, step? Um, flash step. Flash step, right? I do a flash step, but as I'm doing a flash step, I'm bouncing between one dimension and the next, and I have fire that appears behind me when I reappear, whatever you're giving them that ability to bring that into the game. And I find that to be completely awesome, to to be honest. Is Bruce passing out? No, I'm kidding. I heard you. He's reading through chat. Oh, there's there's some deep, there's a, there's some deep stuff in there. I I was wondering (laughs) if you're pulling a Baron from last week. No, uh, doing some private messages and I'm reading my chat because apparently there's a scrap going on over there and that's kind of got my attention and I shouldn't I should be talking about this wonderful game which we were given for six hours but instead I'm looking over at the ruffians <laughs> off to the side <laughs> it's like we need a bouncer for the chat room it's weird no we don't need a bouncer for the chat let them figure it out let them figure it out and maybe they'll become bros later you know how many good things got burned down with that thought processing? <laughs> you know, go ahead. Go ahead, guy. I was I was gonna say now the thing here is is that four fifths of us in the chat are all moderators. 
So it's the bouncers fighting bouncers right now. We can't yes. come in and hire another bouncer when the bouncers are punching each other. I, and I, I kind of have it set up that way. I had a, a real bad issue on Saturday last game I ran. Oh, uh, God. One of my buddies is in chat, Six Nations. And I just, as DM, I was getting tired of seeing one of my players, Greg, run through my chat and give him all, like, I hate you, you're terrible. And, like, it got kind of, like, where he was, like, actually having malice towards the, the players or towards the people in the chat. I'm like, dude, you're supposed to be worried about giants in the game. Just focus on that. He instead goes in the chat, starts causing trouble. So I took away, like, this three months ago, I took away his moderator status. Him and Chris both, they're running through my chat, pissing me off. Fucking last Saturday, Greg goes in there. He's being a belligerent fool. Fucking Sick Nations boots his ass out. <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> and Greg's <laughs> like, what the fuck? I can see if one of our one of us did it, but one of your one of your bots did it. I'm like, it's not a bot. I'm like, it's it, we've never met him. He's a he's a bot. And I'm like. I've talked to him before. I've seen his. I've seen his place. A bot wouldn't live there. It was. It's a nice place, but a bot would not live there. It's. It's too urbanized. Ah, or too too uh, rural. And they're like, no, Bruce, you don't understand. And they gave me like this entire thing. Like everybody you know online is a. Bot. I'm like, listen, dude. I know bots are in every fucking chat room now. Beep boop. But he booted you out. Stop beating up on my chat. Focus on the game. Let Six Nations do what he does. He's a moderator. I want him to be. So happy with with you know the, the the chat. You know the chat needs to have a little organization. You go in there, you start pissing on everybody. That's not organization. You're being a dick. If I'm a bot, can I talk to my programmer? Because there's some few things I'd like to change. Yeah, like, I, I got. How did there, I get yeah. to age? Yeah, can I go back to being 35? Because uh, 40 sucks. I stood up too fast at work today. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to get off topic again. That's all right. Uh, I think Crafty Gamer is having some technician issues, or Econo is too big of a dick. Uh, I'm hoping it's the first one. Well, I think he, I think he was having some internet issues just because he was going a little uh, uh, robotic. robotic for us. So yeah. I really do think it's a fun system. I, I don't think it, it qual. It, it's definitely not a beer and pretzels, as you guys have said. Other system, this game could take so much thought, so mm -hmm. much thought. Pro, uh, 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 is like and sit down and actually go through what you want to do. Here's the keys to the kingdom. Go have fun type game. And oh my god, if Kai was playing any other characters and. Ooh, the character he was playing, like, no, no, we have all this, what he wanted to be playing. We would have been on, you know, uh, still be doing a game today because Kai would be working out worksheets on what goes where, the honey goes here, <laughs> uh, fuck you all, uh, we're all signing NDAs, I don't know, something of that nature. Um, <laughs> am I wrong? No. And yes, I really wanted to play the martial artist because I barely got a chance to hint at what the what things that were further out there. Yes, this game really does need to have when we get around if when he gets around to it. I'm not even gonna say us when he gets around to it to have someone actually sit down and go. I want to pull a page out of. Mage the Ascension, where the spheres have it have abilities. So make sure that when you have your colors, they are tied to effects that are tied to those colors. And so that way, when you le level up or get more powerful in a certain color, it adds effect possibilities and what your abilities can <clears throat> work with. Well, so that you can... Yes. Sorry, I'll, I'll pass that on to the person who sneezed. <laughs> Uh, where did our humble, where did our humble uh, GM go? Probably internet issue, working yes. on it. Yeah, but no, I, think I, I mean, I know I'm talking without him here, but I guess it's just simply the idea that each of the colors had effects that were tied to it. I found awesome. 
giving me only six six spheres to worry about instead of eight or nine, I'm also okay with. But having like effects and abilities that are tied to each of those spheres, and then with the and then with also the option that he was hinting at that what I could do, which was the if you knew one piece, you knew there's a higher level of yeah, there's all the demon fruits and all the cool colors and sounds and and, and all those special abilities. But there's a but there was a level that was past that that was different and that we were that but i'm like sweet can i aim for that stuff and yes and that was the wonderful world of things that we didn't have time to explore didn't have time to work out had i got if i was to play this campaign for a prolonged period of time yeah there would be it would be starting to appreciate if we ever got to high end to late game considering that i was you know able to do what was in essence um a major super attack and I'm only mid level and I'm not even built well. Uh, yeah, this could be very, very crazy. And it might turn into one of those things where whoever is your swordsman is going to be, um, they're going to be off somewhere else, you know, fighting God because that's what they do because they can parry every attack that God throws at them. And everybody else with their, two three dodges meanwhile the swordsman has like six and could potentially do even more e yeah I, I wasn't really doing anything close to what i could actually you know what i already knew i could do with now if i had been built built better and was actually playing to my strengths um yeah i think i really could there's a reason why i went with six swords because i knew i could actually use all six of them in a single combat round and i was just going i have no need to there's nothing there's nothing out there that i need to kill that badly and yeah i was i could see the potential that this might not be a game that's built for the whole party fighting simultaneously as a group mm. though it can but you can. boy will we have Obliterate whatever the fuck is in our way. You know, uh, in the you, whole party. Yes? It felt like uh, reading an Avengers comic book. There was really no organized way for the opposition to come back at us. No. Yeah. And I, I get that. I mean, just running at a shop. Just me from a shop point of view, running from a shop. If I don't have all four, five, six people involved in some way especially when it's a ship battle because i've done a couple ship battles up to date but they're normal ship battles not what we did in his in his game it, it just you have people sitting around the table being bored you know what i do whenever that starts to happen connell mm -hmm. and i haven't had it happen in a few years but when i have a situation where there's combat going on but tommy is upstairs can't can't do nothing because he's upstairs trying to get down to where the action is, and it's taking him minutes. All right, well, while you're running down, uh, why don't you roll the damage dice for me? All right, why don't you move the figs on the table for the party? Let me, you know, have have people multitask and do shit like that. I know that that works, and I that is a great idea. I will have to steal that one. Please uh, or, do. Uh, but what if your games? And I hate the fact that we're actually going this direction more and more. I find, but what if your games are like your Saturday games, where you know you're playing with people that you really want to play with, but one lives in Scotland, one lives in uh, Illinois, one lives wherever across the world, and you're looking at a screen. All you're doing is, uh, you know, that they can't come over, move, roll your dice for you. They can't do this. They can't do that. They're quite literally looking at a, a light bulb. You know what? I would I would still ask him to roll the damage dice. Here, roll this many dice for me and add this to the result. Tell me what you get. Okay. Or, or, or photograph it. Or, or or pan the camera down at your die tray. I don't give a shit. But have him just, just something to stay involved in the moment. Because okay. during the middle of combat, it's not the time to say to pause. You need to do a tactics. You know, Tommy, your rogue is a badass... Uh, flanker get behind this person jenny make sure you cast sleep on those bunch of colds over there 
no, no, no. We're in the middle of initiative. You don't do that planning. If you're going to do that, you're on your phone texting and turn your fucking notifications off. Go ahead. Sorry, Kat. Um, I guess I'm going to talk from my own personal experience. I, I preferences. I don't mind if I get left out of a combat. I really don't because I know that I, I know how fast combat really happens in terms of how many seconds passed and say I'm on the other end of a building. Just, I, I, I know this from working in, in, in multiple in shops where the phone is ringing and I have 30 seconds to get across the entire building to answer it. And I could be in a dead sprint dodging over packages and jumping shit to get there. But that's 18, you know, that's 30 seconds. And I might miss that call. Now imagine if you're a block, a city block away, you know, cause you're just, Hey, Hey, um, rogue, I need you to scout about a quarter mile away ahead of us. And then, you know, signal back to us. But if the scout gets into a problem, the party is 30 seconds, but you know, is 30 seconds out until you realize, Hey, the longest three seconds ever is waiting for as waiting for your reinforcements to show up and hoping that you don't die. But so they usually play games of games of rocket tag, where everybody hits, everyone does massive damage, and your AC means nothing, and your defense means nothing because the guy who's off, who, who, I mean, who's you know meant to challenge the guy with the heaviest armor is going to hit everybody else in their sleep and then hit for enough damage to make everybody else die in two hits. In, I, it's one of those moments of realizing um, there's no there's no hope kind. So when I realize that, oh, shoot, I'm out doing something else and a fight breaks out, I'm not going to somehow go, am I there? How fast can I be there? No, I know I'm I know I'm five minutes out. There's no way I'm going to get there. I'm not going to like I'm not going to worry because I if the party can somehow manage to hold out for. 30 combat rounds. <laughs> no GM wants to run a combat that long, but you're still thir- you're still fi- you're still 30 com- you know, 30 to 60 combat rounds out from being healthy. I'm in a dead sprint. When will I be there? 4 minutes. Shit. Well, hey guys, I'm going to go and do something else for a bit and then when I get back um in the GM, I'll get back to you later. That, it, that's okay. No, no problem. And you know, cuz sometimes shit happens. I can't have I'm used to playing games where shit happens, and it happens fast. Like I said, I'm used to playing. Uh, I running L5R. That's a game where you die. I initiative is rolled, and you're dead in two rounds. I mean, twelve seconds pass, and someone's, and four people are corpses. And so if you're there, well, well, I, so therefore this is this sounds like a game where, um, it's very L5R or storyteller esque where. Combat happens unless you're literally right there, you know, battle buddy next to somebody. Um, they live and die on their own. And there's no team working. Like, as much as you want to teamwork, there's unless you're literally moving shoulder to shoulder through combat. And since we have all these cool, cool major powers, I would really suggest not standing next to each other because one guy, one swords master jumps in and does, you know, his special attack ability, which hits everybody within a five foot, you know, a 10 foot radius. And the entire party, you know, is dead in a single round. And that's the kind of things that you're going to be looking at here is one guy swings, 40 people go flying. Um, and I guess I, I guess this is the difference between playing a game where you're all playing a bunch of sacks of rice that move around and take um, hit point damage till you die, it, it, you know, but you're 100% functional while you're getting hit to um, playing rocket tag. And since a lot of people build characters that are rocket tag characters that you're you go first you hit you win there's no, I mean, there's no other way of looking at it and yeah i i guess it's just me looking at it from running and playing these these the style of games long enough that i'll get a like i realize as a player i'll get a chance to have my own my own spotlight time in the future yeah, I'm getting spotlight time now, and as long as I'm a nice player and not going, huh, I'm going to take care. I'm going to do everything all the time. No, there's a reason why that what why the uh, why the protagonist waits to the I uh, waits to their uh, to their scene to hit their, to hit their theme music, and then they go into combat. 
that's really what it comes to. It comes down to is we're playing a cinematic game. Think on a think like a cinem- like your cinematic. I yeah, it's all cool to have that end moment where the entire Avengers team all assembles and goes in as a team and obliterates entire armies. But sometimes you gotta let somebody go fight on their own, you know, for their own honor out there, <laughs> proud. <laughs> And that is a great point. And I've been in a few campaigns where that was very much just like, wait, I'm on top of tower and it's going down there. It's going to be a couple rounds before I can get uh, get there. I'm going to go use the facilities or I'm going to go grab a soda or, hey, I saw a miniature I, in the, the other room I wanted to buy. I'll be right back. Yeah. Um, 30 rounds. Jesus. That's what, three hours? <laughs> yeah. And trust me. With how hard you guys hit, I watched you guys on Saturday. You guys got through like what? Five, six, seven combat rounds? Um, and it took you hours? Oh, two, yeah. Uh, two, two dragons. Two eight dragons. Giants. Eight giants. And like maybe eight, ten rounds. Tops. Yeah. Tops. Um, yeah. Yeah. I That's the worst part about Pathfinder, though, is the initiative system. It just takes too fucking long. And then you have the fucking full round action. So, like, your marshals have to do math, like, quickly clack math rocks to hit, damage to hit, damage. I got four attacks around. I've got haste. I've got blessing of fervor. Yeah, he's back. Sorry about that. My internet crapped out. And no matter what I do, it won't, it literally won't come back up. So, I had to use my. 4G hotspot. So I, I guess, yeah, sorry, Crafty. Welcome back. But no, we're just hitting on the problem of, of combat and games. It's just simply what it is. And had I gone full out, you better believe I would have taken, even if I knew all my math, did all my math right, had all my equations worked out, I would have been, you know, six attacks swinging, and it would have been a complete and total ma- I, murder fest. That would have taken me three minutes, I three four minutes of roll, so about ten minutes of rolling, and I would have been done with my turn. And that's assuming I did nothing besides n- no cool powers, no cool abilities, no extra dice rolls, just pure combating. I would have been a five to eight to ten minute combat to swing all all six times. I would prefer just to have one really cool effect. That's kind of why I don't like games that have multiple attacks. You should have one. I had one signature attack, and then maybe, you know, choose to have a second or third if you cho- with Pellies. This is where Bruce and I's West End games uh, dice rolling and my love of of, of um, storyteller, where you half die, you know, where you half your dice pools to get more attacks. So you have one attack. It's one good attack, unless you have celerity and fuck celerity. Fuck using rage for more attacks. Fuck, uh, I, there's ways of getting multiple attacks, but still, one, one, one meaningful attack is what you should have. Oh, as I get one. As something you should add on, I'm being slightly playful when I say this. No, in blood points. I get one attack. That one special attack does extra damage if you call out your attack as you're doing it. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Oh yeah! At that point, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, it, you know, it's like, it, it was like thousand, I, I thousand cherry blossom sword attack. Yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck that, fuck yeah! I'm gonna go pull out some exalted shit at that point. And that's really what I was playing. I was playing an exalted martial character, and everybody else was like, I got superpowers. I need to call it. Like, excuse me, I'm going to go. I, I'm going to go slay God now. Excuse me. Well. If you look at how I played it, Kai, I was playing it as one of the alchemicals. I know you were, and I was happy with that. I love (laughs) alchemicals. So we were totally in the right spirit for this, because we were playing it. Anime weeaboo shit. That's the way this game was was supposed to be. This game was designed to be... I'm just weeaboo adjacent. I'm I'm not a weeaboo. You're weeaboo adjacent, which means you can be helped through this. Some people who are just like, I don't watch anime. Congratulations, you're lost. This game's gonna be all about is like, excuse me, while I go into my first release form, boom. Now you can feel my spiritual pressure increase by fourfold. 
Oh God, it's terrifying. I know. This is just the sh- this is just me walking. I don't, I feel like I should run away. That's what you he, should be doing. Sh- the soul it's over decided- nine thousand. I know, <laughs> but the soul are decided to actually flare up. Is it? it- I his anima? Oh shit, we should all run the fuck away now. Why? Do you see the lightning bolts? Yeah. Oh, we should just run now. Why? We're about to die. <laughs> the, the thousand, uh, yeah. The thousand tears of the Grundle Punch. You know, that's cool. That's cool. The potential for this was awesome. The, the color theming and the others, like, like, because we have earth, wind, water, fire, heart, and I don't know, leftover chicken. I don't know what the last power was. Uh, see here it's all um life uh creation slash life and wood, uh, got it. earth um, right red was fire and destruction blue right is wind and change right and control uh yellow was air uh no uh that uh yellow uh blue is wind and change so air technically the okay, yellow so is lightning water? and power okay so that's okay i can live with that and water was another um, cool purple Purple is ice and permanence, and don't want to forget the silver, which is magic and high technology. Right. Void. Got it. Void. With your powers combined. I, I, have, have, a, I have a copyright infringement. <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to be a Kyle Rayner and collect them all and be, you know, turn them into lantern rings. Hey, that's a cool idea, too. Fuck, this has got potential for doing this kind of shit. And I really like the fact that, okay, if this gets, if that mass is refined down to more specific, more focusing on what the spheres, what the colors, sorry, I, again, major attention player, what the spheres slash colors can do, and then build upon them so that way you're kind of picking and choosing. And I wish we had, like, you know, somebody who is more of an actual spear mage, you know, color mage going on here, the refractionist. And I like the idea of, you know, it's like somebody working out the ability on how to balance all six colors, put it back into, you know, the actual full uh, full light of the white light, the unified color scheme, and then being just like, okay, here's all six four combined and blast. And I'm like, oh, goody. Yeah. You know, because you've got a lot of, you've got a lot of like potential on, sure, like you had the six the, the six colors plus I uh, plus the um, the key you know the key special swordsman ability powers that were in there plus you got other I uh, other bonuses uh, with with the fruits and you have other things so you have a lot of potential to I like I don't want to say like to do to combine it together and make it exciting and interesting but. Only as good as the people who are playing it are able to grasp and play with, you know, and unfold it and to do more. Because, like, you know, if you have people who are just like, well, the book says that if I use the white power, uh, the yellow power properly and mix uh, like the blue power, I get a little bit faster for an extra attack. That's being boring, but congratulations. You are a human tier player. You are boring. But if you have somebody who's creative and knows how to mix and match things and you might have some really diabolically awesome combos but then again if you i then again at that point just go just go read up on exalted and go see where that game can go off the rails like faster than a chinese bullet train off that decided to go fall off the rack i off the rails it goes Wee, boom oh shit fires um <laughs> i said I like this game. It could be a lot of fun. It just needs a lot of refining and a much like better it. character sheet. That's really what it needs. <laughs> He's not going to get off that character sheet. I'm telling you that right now. That. It needs a better character sheet. It needs the numbers all unified. So up. So it's either all up or all down. That's what we need here. All up or all down. Not so what are you not half up equations shit here. <laughs> so what I'm hearing, uh, Crafty Gamer, is you just tell, uh, say, Kai, fine. That, that's awesome, Kai. Thank you, Kai. Uh, so if you have a problem with the character sheet, you fucking make one. <laughs> I will. You can tell me what's supposed to be on it, and I'll fucking make it. It'll be, hand, it'll be horrible handwritten, but it will work. 
and then smarter people who can do graphical audio, uh, graphical shit, will go. I can make that work, and then they can go do all the pretty gre- uh, greens and white and blacks or whatever, so, and all that fancy filigree and shit. But mine will be a functional character sheet. So what what'll happen is that he will he'll handwrite it, give it to Jade. Jade will make it pretty, and then everyone will be happy. That's my <laughs> theory. That's, That's because look, look, Jade is Jade is a sidereal. That's his magic power. Take our garbage, make it <laughs> and make it good. <laughs> yes. And 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 for those who have been wondering, he should be back, if I remember correctly, next week. You know, as uh, if, good. We need our vizier back because we've got, we've got we got you are alchemical. We got we need Jade. I Jade our uh, our sidereal back. We need a fucking circle again. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is no. What I'm actually seeing when you talk about Jade, he's watching this. I I just see like the first like five minutes of uh what was that um Clark's where the main guy goes into the gas station and that's Jade saying this is my day off. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to share the screen real quick. Is it sharing or am I just seeing Chimera? You're sharing. You're sharing. It's me. It's okay. Me. You see me everywhere. It's All my right. birthday. Fuck off. <laughs> that was a great it was, it was a sequel series that everyone kind of forgets. Oh, come on. If we want to do that, we've got the Power Rangers RPG right here. <laughs> Can I be the Green Ranger? <laughs> I got rules for that. What was a white ranger? My OBS he, is lagging right he, now. I'm sorry, guys. He he also does have the I believe the GI Joe one too. Fuck yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> not, only that, not only that, but I also have the Decepticon handbook and the Cobra handbook. So that and- way. If you want to be, you want to play the real heroes. Oh, wow! <laughs> I, was I, don't know, don't like I want to be a musician. Could you help me out with that one? Yes, yes, I can. You I mean, have a system that promotes Jack Black. You know, <laughs> brutal legend. Hell yes, I do have that game too. Over here. <laughs> yeah, I got that one over here. Come on. You want to play this? Yeah, come on. Gods of Battle Ragnarok? Yeah, we got this. We can play. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now to now to continue this little game, I just recently found uh, someone, I should say, someone put the RPG to Naruto in the ch- in uh, Discord, and I grabbed it. Now to Woo! see if Kai has that one. I don't have that one yet. Who makes it? Is it compatible with the, uh, my other ones? If, if so, I'll buy it. I don't know. I haven't I delved too deep into it. It's, it's I, like, it's a lot of pages. I think... I think it was a homebrew. Ah, oh, I don't want that. I, see the reason the reason why I like those, all those because that's all uh, that's all Renegade, I, I Renegade presses um, E twenty uh, Essence twenty system, which means they're all compatible with each other. So therefore, I don't need to worry about <laughs> about ooh ooh. I, this is, no no it, it it all fuses together like fucking Voltron. And I can go now. I can have the best role the best role playing game ever. Yeah. So I'm hearing all I see is that. Sorry. Uh, well, no, all I see, <laughs> go for it. I quit. Okay. Uh, all I see if, if, with Kai saying I have, uh, I got all the stuff I could put together. All I see is the scene from Gravity Falls when the uncle has all three of those books. Finally, I have them all. Oh, it's been years, but I have them. <laughs> the ultimate nineteen eighties RPG. <laughs> Where's the best okay. And see, and see, the the thing is, is what what I hear is that. In the town I grew up in, we had a clerk for a town or village, and he, he, when he would be sitting reading through correspondence, he'd say, "Yeah, we got a letter from so and so, and y'all got a copy of that." And that, that's literally how he went through all the correspondence. He didn't read it at all. He said, "Y'all got a copy of that," and it was just like, "Yeah, that, that's what Kai." Kai's like, "You know, I want this. Uh, uh, I got that. See." See, see, we all got a copy of that. 
I was joking about the Ghostbuster one, but actually, I think there is a Ghostbuster. Arc. There is, and it's very, very terribly written. Okay. Uh, it's, yeah, I, it is awful. I got, friend, I got a friend who's a Ghostbuster lo- lover. We ended up playing it a few weeks back just because we were fun and bored and drinking around a fire. And yeah, no, that game deserves to be forgotten. Where were you a couple nights ago? I'm walking outside and literally quite nothing to do. I'm like, this is a great night to have a bonfire. I can't have one where I live. I'll bug Jay. Hey, bonfire, sorry. Uh, can't have one where I live. I'm like, you mother. Uh, I, we were out in Creep Core. I was. I just Deep burning. Looking. Yep. I you need to get yeah. I should just give you my phone number. I live in Peking, which is right next to Creve. What the fuck was I drinking? Look, Creve Core exists only for only to give you tickets for speeding through it. That's all it's there for. I feel that way about Indiana. <laughs> See, the problem with Indiana is, is you have Illinois plates, and therefore. They assume everybody who's uh, who's from Illinois is a rich person, so therefore they will tag you for money. Oh, I hate Indiana. They hunt. They they hate Illinois, and they look for you. They look for our plates. I, I refuse it. You know, there's a part of me that wants to refuse that Indiana is a real place because they don't share the same time zone. But I got this really great guy, a friend, who I consider a friend on my Sunday show that lives in Indiana. So I, I'm kind of torn. It's like California. Well, see, I don't believe it's see, a real place see. either. It, be be careful what you're saying because all of my family lives in Indiana. Yeah, that's where, all, that's where about all of mine are. You know where Evansville is? Yeah, it, that's it, damn. That's just a little, uh, suburb of Illinois. Uh, 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 well, not uh, not Danville, Evansville, Indiana, right <laughs> next to the small town code Poseyville, Indiana. Evansville. Uh, I am not not sponsored by what I'm about ready to say at all. If they ever end up watching the show, it'd be amazing. Cigar Cigar is a cigar shop they have in Evansville. It is the most beautiful cigar shop I've been in uh, that wasn't on East or West Coast. Okay. I, you know, I'm smoking a cigar. These are the things I enjoy in life, you know? It's the small things. All right. Well, we lost Bruce to the internet, his toilet. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, Bruce, Bruce put himself backstage, so it's okay. Uh-huh. So, I mean, I think we've pretty much have gone through everything. Uh, we the the question, writing? yeah. The, the we we beaten up uh, uh, TCG pretty hard. So, uh, Kai, would you play it again? Yes. Yes. Shadow. Would you play it again? Of course. Connell, would you play it again? If it came with a bottle of rum. But yes. Hey, it's a well, pirate. You, you know, I'll just take my, my own self out. <laughs> it is, as long as it's, uh, what the heck is that? Admiral uh, Nelson. You, you, have to, you have to drink Nelson to, to play. Uh, I am not reliving that part of my college life ever again. <laughs> uh, and and I, I myself, yes, yes I, I I would play it again. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we're not quite at the two-hour mark, but I think we can pretty much go ahead and start wrapping up here. Uh, Connell, what do you got coming up this weekend? Uh, Saturday, uh, I imagine Bruce has talked about this. I don't know if he's doing it online. He does everything else on uh, Vision. I will be part of a small group that are playing his his system because my normal every other Saturday game is on, on hiatus. Then Sunday, 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 we are celebrating Halloween the best that we can. So last week we did The Curse of Frankenstein. This week, we are doing Flatliners. It's a 19, uh, 1990 early film. Um, it's it's a bit much. I enjoyed it as a kid. I'm hoping uh, that the panel I have somewhat can put up with it because hopefully they're nicer than they were with Howard the Duck, the Bastards. <laughs> it's a classic, but no, no one likes it. Made me watch Death Race 2000, 1970. Hey, what are you talking about? I liked Howard. Oh, good yeah. movie. I used That's to collect right. comic books. Oh, I love Howard the Duck. Anyways, I'm now I'm rambling on. But yeah, uh, this Sunday we'll be doing uh, Flatliners. 
Hopefully my chat does not go to the flat line themselves. Uh, that's what I got going on. All right. Shadow, what do you got coming up? I've got a Saturday night shadow chat. Uh, the topic is still in the works. Uh, I'm toying with uh, curses and uh, superstitions and things like that in sci-fi. Um, then, you know, Sunday I'll be hanging out with uh, with the, the boys on Carl's show. And next week, you know, we're doing more uh, Ravenloft reviews. Been getting a lot of really good responses on that. It's my first time ever through Ravenloft. Uh, and, and, you know, they're not all going to be winners. But so far, I, I definitely would recommend it if you're into the gothic horror, vampire hunting, Solomon Kane kind of D&D escapades. Uh, other than that, just enjoying the uh, October festivities. Right. And Bruce, what do you got coming up this week? Well, um, if you like what I do, Saturday, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I should be starting off with the alpha test for my system with some friends of mine and people from the chat, people from the panel, etc. Looking forward to this. And... Going to run about six hours. Going to do multiple weeks. Maybe a full campaign. I don't know. As you do know, that is not a complete system yet. Haven't gone through the fine tuning and all that, which is why we're doing an alpha test. Secondly, after that's over, I'm going to eat and then come back right back to the web and get in front of Discord, inside my Discord, there's a place called Kai's Musings. And if you want to read what's on Kai's mind, you can. It archives very well. All the way to back to last, what, October or August? October 1st is when we started up last year. Yeah. So there's a lot to read about. And somebody who's been playing games for three decades uh, just kind of goes on a rampage that's what you get well from about nine o'clock to eleven o'clock maybe later me and kai are going to be talking again and last time we did it we had a lot of good feedback because we studied we uh went and reviewed a system that both of us do appreciate quite a bit it's the the what is that spheres of power system yeah and we both liked it, both came off like, yeah, we probably should have ran some campaigns with this. It's not, not a bad system. Uh, we're going to talk probably some other topics, but we might circle back to that because if you get on Kai's brainstem and look at the, th the, the list of topics he'd like to talk about, that's a very extensive list. So I figure if I go in there, I'll just poke a couple of those. <laughs> It's kind of like playing Jenga. Which one of these blocks is load bearing? Oh God, I don't want to be part of that conversation. <laughs> you can always read along and then ask silly questions. And no, no, no. I want to be right in the batter. I, I want to see how far we can set the Kai uh, rant. You know, oh, come on. I had a big conversation this week about about a lot of really strange, stupid stuff, and it went. Kind of crazy for a couple day for a couple days. Where I like quiet for, I was quiet for I for a couple of weeks, and then also now nowhere, poke poke, and then uh, it just exploding conversations for like three days. I was want nice. I want the ch uh, chat to know. Hopefully next week, me and uh, Kai will go be seeing another movie. This will be the second outing that we've done. The first one was Oppenheimer, and I had a great time watching that movie. I've seen that movie with you, and next one we see will be The Hangovers, I think it's called, or something like that. Yeah. Which I, I, I look forward to hanging out with you. I found a pizza place in the Heights I really like, but I don't want to spend $30 on a 10-inch pizza. So oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to figure out meal at some point, too. If not, Richard's. But if we go to Richard's, I know at least two other people are going to bitch at us that they didn't come along. Oh no, they can come sing and come watch a movie with us too. It'll be okay. Okay. 
So, is what else is going on? Anybody else have anything else they want to advertise or get off their chest? At least here in public. Uh, my video isn't until next Saturday. Mm. I do. I do. But we have that beautiful, beautiful D20 in the corner of our show. <laughs> and what I want to talk about very much goes into the politics. And no one's doing a politics show this week. And I can't get this shit off my chest. So, no, I'm good. Why don't you message Janet? See if she'll put you on a shit show. Uh, J, uh, uh, DM James had a very interesting uh, political chat earlier. I think it was today. You guys might want to check out. All right. So uh, I think we'll go ahead and call it here, guys. I uh, want to thank everybody for joining us. Also want to thank the Crafting Gamer for uh, putting up with our shenanigans. And... Thank you for, for definitely running the game for us. So oh, yeah. at this point, folks, we're going to say uh, adieu and goodbye next week. We're going to be uh, doing a, a two-parter. We're going to be looking at uh, Supernatural and Horror. Those two just kind of go together. Since we're coming up on my Halloween season, uh, we're going to be delving into that. So definitely make sure you join us. And... Uh, We'll uh, see you folks next time. Next Trails,